Hello there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, is it possible to run a virtual machine inside of another virtual machine inside of another virtual machine? Well, yes it is. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so this video is divided into two major parts. The first part, I'm going to show you a demo of a VM running inside of a VM running inside of a VM. And then we're going to go and talk about the technology. It's called nested virtualization. We'll talk a little bit about that. And at the very end, I'll show you how you can connect to the third VM, the third layer of VM, the VM inside the VM inside the VM via remote desktop. So it looks like you're just connecting straight to a normal desktop. Okay, let's get cracking. This is a Windows 10 PC. This is going to be our host. In fact, this is the same PC I bought uh, for that video where I was talking about alternatives to the Raspberry Pi. You could use a cheap Windows second-hand PC along with a Raspberry Pi Pico. Do check out that video if that kind of thing interests you. What have we got? This is a fairly old i5. It's got quad core. I've now upgraded to have 20 gigs of memory that will help us in trying to run a VM inside a VM inside of a VM. Okay, so the first thing we do is we start up hypervisor and I've gone ahead, obviously I've created all of these VMs beforehand and we're going to start our Windows 11 dev environment and get that up and running now here. Now while we're waiting for that to come up, let's just tidy up a few things here. One thing is here I've got a uh, a, a notepad file which says this is the host PC. We're just going to put this over here like this because we're going to see lots of desktops over the next few minutes and this kind of helps us keep a track of which one is which. Okay so here we are we now have a Windows 11 development environment. It's one of the free environments you can download from Microsoft that works for 180 days so it helps you develop things uh, specifically for Windows 11 and this is a virtual machine here is our main machine we're running hypervisor to do this okay this is our host position now I've also got a similar document here this is VM1 look we're just going to keep that kind of just floating around here because that's going to be useful for us as well okay so a desktop inside of a desktop a standard virtual machine no problem so far now on this machine we can also start up hypervisor and in here I have a Windows 10 virtual machine. So let's start that one. Okay, so now here we have a Windows 10 VM, which is running inside of our Windows 11 VM, which is running inside of our host PC. Now I've got another text file here. This is VM2, just to help us out there. Let's just move this window across a bit. Okay, there you go, VM2, VM1, host PC. Okay, so now this one has also got hypervisor installed on it. Okay, so here we have our third VM running. We've got the same text file here that just reminds us of where we are. Okay, let's just small shrink that down a little bit. So there we go. So what have we got? We've got VM3. This is the third Windows 10 VM. It's running inside of another VM, VM2, which is also Windows 10, which is running inside of the first VM, which is Windows 11 develop, development environment, which is then running on a host PC. So there you go, uh, four copies of Windows all running simultaneously at the same time. Okay, so let's start looking at nested virtualization. The technology allows us to have a VM inside a VM inside a VM. So nested virtualization is a feature that lets you run a VM inside of another VM. Now over the years hardware has improved and the use cases for nested virtualization has expanded. So for example if you're using app development and testing you might need to run an emulator and often that emulator is in itself a virtual machine for for example a smartphone. For training purposes, instructors might want to simulate complex network setups and they can do that all within a single VM by creating other VMs inside of it. Again, for cybersecurity training where you need multiple layers of virtualization might help to simulate real world scenarios. Of course, there's a the whole issues of what they're doing in the cloud. We're already used to having VMs. Uh, cloud instances running on our, you know, for our websites and so on. And sometimes even having a VM in inside a VM can be uh, useful. Nested virtualization can also be used in a scenario where a container software, let's say like Docker, is being used inside of a VM, especially when these containers might need their own VM like uh, capabilities. And of course, in VDI virtual desktop infrastructure scenarios, uh, you may be running uh, for your desktop a VM, and then you might say, well, I still need to run a VM here, and you need to do that inside of the virtual desktop you're already running inside of your VM. 
Now, of course, there is also the last one which I didn't put in on it. It's just fun to try it out. So there we go. Now, modern processes include hardware features that make virtualization faster and more secure. Hyper-V, which we'll talk about in a minute, relies on these processor extensions to run virtual machines. And they're called, for example, Intel VTX AMD V. Nested virtualization makes this hardware support available to the guest virtual machines. So here is a simplified version of what's happening if you've got a Hyper-V hypervisor, for example. So here's your CPU with those virtualization extensions, which we'll talk more about in a minute. You have the hypervisor, and then you have your guest OS. Now, normally, when the guest OS is running on this virtual CPU, it doesn't have access to these virtualization extensions. So you get one level of virtualization, a guest OS that's running, and you can't run another guest OS, another virtual machine inside of this one. But with uh, the uh, nested virtualization, then these functions here, these virtualization extensions are passed up through the system. So inside of this one virtualized machine, you can have another one. And then there's another virtual CPU which is running inside of there. And of course you can keep nesting up and up. The important thing is that these virtualization extensions, which we're gonna to touch on in a second, need to be passed through each level of the hypervisor as you go down through each level, each nesting VM inside of a VM. Now there's plenty of virtualization software available. I've mentioned Hyper-V, but I just wanted to say that there are lots of other ones available and you can pick according to what you want, whether you're talking about open source, whether you're talking about with paid support, whether you're talking about uh, whether you're talking about enterprise support, whether you're talking about just for your home lab, lots of different ones, VirtualBox, VMware, Hyper-V, uh, Proxmox, Parallels, Over, and many more. Now, I'll be using Hyper-V for this demo because really it's the best one for Windows on a personal computer. And as I've showed, we've got Windows inside of Windows inside of Windows. Now, to use all of these things, you're going to need hardware support called Second Level Address Translation, SLAT. Now, Hyper-V needs a 64-bit processor with SLAT. It's sometimes called nesting pages, and it's basically a hardware-assisted virtualization technology. Now, it's implemented in AMD's and Intel's virtualization technologies, as I mentioned earlier on. And if you were looking up your processor, for example, on Intel's kind of page of uh, information about your processor, you'll see here VTX with extended pages. That's SLAT, basically. Now, SLAT started to appear in process Intel processors from 2008 onwards, as of 2015, almost all new server, desktop, and mobile Intel processors support VTX with some of the Intel Atom processors as a primary exception. AMD started to appear in processors from 2006 onwards, and as of 2019, all Zen-based AMD processors support SLAT via AMD's virtualization technology. Now, I said we talk about uh, Hyper-V, the downside of Hyper-V compared to, let's say, VirtualBox is that you need Windows 10 Pro or Enterprise or Windows 11 Pro or Enterprise. It doesn't work fully with the home editions, although Windows 11 does have a lot of that stuff built into it, though it's just not quite there when you use the home edition. But there are hacks to get around that. Now, if you do have a Pro or Enterprise edition, you need to turn, go to this page where you turn on or off Windows features and you may need to make sure you've got Hyper-V ticked. Now, even once you've got Hyper-V installed, you still need to specifically enable nested virtualization. So at each level, when you start a VM, you need to type in that command there. And where it says VM name here, you need to actually type in the name of the VM that you've created, you know, Win 10, Win 11, whatever you've called it. And you need to do that from a PowerShell with administrator rights. And that will enable one more nested layer of virtualization. A couple of other quick things to mention. If you do want to have your nested virtual machines getting access to your network, then you're gonna to need to make sure that you set up the virtual machine with an external virtual switch, which means it basically is bridged. That's the way Microsoft are calling it, external bridge to your actual network uh, card and now onto the network. And in order for the packets to be routed, you need to enable Mac spoofing. So you need an external uh, bridge on all layers, on all VMs, so in this case, in the demo I showed on all three VMs, and you need to have Mac level uh, address spoofing enabled on at least the first two, okay? And once you've got those enabled, then you will be able to use your VM uh, completely on your network as if it was a separate machine on your network. And so just to show here inside of the Hyper-V thing, you need to make sure you create a virtual switch, which is external. Now we should be able to connect to these virtual machines over the remote desktop protocol. So back on our host PC, I can jump straight into this third VM directly using desktop sharing. Let's set that up. Mm -hmm. 
Now to connect to it, we're going to need to know this name, Desktop 1VDB9TF. You can, of course, rename the PC to have a different name. So now let's go over to the host PC so that we can actually minimize the first VM, which of course will minimize all the others at the same time. And here we've got the remote desktop uh, program. So let's run desktop hyphen 1VDB9TF. Hope we've got that right. And this should now bring up a full remote desktop. So I'm connecting through to VM3 from the physical host. Of course, I can connect to this from anywhere else on the network. There we go. Now I'm getting it full screen as well. But there's that text file. This is VM3. I could, of course, connect also to VM2 and also to, to VM1 and, and have all these desktops running uh, on that one physical machine. Okay, so there you have it, a VM inside a VM inside of a VM. I really enjoyed making this video. I hope you found it fun too. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, I invite you to stick around by subscribing to the channel. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.